Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are in Mississippi and we are actually going to be going to something a little bit unique that I was not expecting to be here. Mississippi, believe it or not, has a petrified forest and we're going to be going right up to this building and then I believe a trail behind this is going to reveal some of the secrets of eons of time. So if you're ready to go, let's go inside and have an adventure. Okay, it's time for us to start off this trail and we ended up with a trail guide after paying the small admission fee. It does cost a little bit to come here, but it is under $10 and they have some really cool things inside. I will say this, out of all the places that we've been, this is one of the least expensive and it gives us a really wonderful perspective as to a different part of the history of Mississippi. Also, because it is very inexpensive, it's nice because you could bring the entire family here. Not only do they have a beautiful walking trail that we're about to go on, but they also have camping here and a picnic area that's gorgeous. It's so pretty here. I enjoyed just walking around the store and seeing some of the beautiful things that they had. They have a very wide selection of different rocks and gems. So while you're here, if there's something that's calling your name, you can probably find it inside. This is also a not only family friendly place, but also a dog friendly place. So you can bring your little fur friend here like we brought Tyson. Of course, we're starting off strong right out the gate with this log right here, which weighs 1,680 five pounds and they actually cut the end so you could see the growth rings on this one so as you can see when it petrified it didn't take away the ring pattern which is typically known as a tree cookie and you can count these rings and be able to tell how old the tree is whenever it's still alive but whenever it turned to stone it kind of mends some of those together as they turn into this very rocky surface this is interesting but speaking of tree cookies, we have a very impressive, huge tree cookie to bring us up to date on just how old some of these might actually be. So here you can see this was cut in the 60s and brought here. This is actually from California and it is approximately 1,018 years old. And you can see that many of the petrified trees in this area were this size as living trees and the petrified log to our right has been identified as a sequoia so as you can see each one of these dots is significant to a time period and it shows where it very first began was dated all the way back to 942 a.d and it continues to go all the way out until world war ii so you can see that these trees we're here even before us as immigrants coming to the United States. So that's pretty cool. And it's a fascinating reminder of just how big this world is around us. You know, a lot of times whenever we go to places, we see new construction or things that have happened within the last 200, 300 years. But seeing things that go all the way back to 942 AD is wild, but there's a lot more here, so I'm really excited to start exploring. We have this path to go catch up with Riley and Tyson on, so let's get going. As I was going along and looking at all of this natural vegetation, I've been consulting this little guide. This thing is super handy. But I finally caught up to Riley and Tyson. This is a beautiful walk and I think Tyson's really enjoying it quite a bit as well because of the pavement that they have. So it's not hard on these little paws. As we walk along, we made it to point three and point three actually tells us a little bit more about our location. The corresponding stop on our map says that the earliest scientists studied this area and found that these ancient trees were probably brought here as driftwood by prehistoric rivers. Which would totally make sense because the waterways through this area have always been a point of very interesting movement and you're able to find all sorts of cool things in this region as a result of that through some of the Native American items that they've also found that were washed around through earlier rivers that may or may not still exist. So that is pretty fascinating. And I love that each of these little stops has a corresponding number and then you can consult it and just get some brain wrinkles in between, all the while enjoying a nice, beautiful walk. <sighs> 
love getting out and stretching my legs. Today, we are walking for a cause though. We are planting trees with our tree card, so every step we take gets us closer to planting one tree. If you haven't planted any trees with tree card before, it is absolutely free. I encourage you to join me and do nature walks like this and help the world around us grow just a little bit better by planting those trees. So with that said, back to my walking. Another stop for the books, number four here. And all of this that has the lichen on it, this is actually petrified wood apparently. And it says, according to our little guide, that after being changed into stone, this log was broken into sections, either by the stress of the long burial, natural movements of the earth, or it was later uncovered by erosion. So in other words, to the average person, this might just look like stone because it looks kind of like the side of the hill as it slopes down. But the actual mineral makeup of these is not that of a regular stone like piece. In fact, it is still a tree in there, believe it or not. This has the DNA of a tree, a piece of petrified wood. And this thing is probably millions of years old, realistically. It's been here for a very, very long time but it was unearthed by the movement of the water. And you can see up here, these areas, you can see the water washes down them. And as it does, it uncovers different things. So I can only imagine that when they came out here and they started looking around and thought, oh, that's just some more stone. And then all of a sudden they were like, wait, that's a tree. They had to be scratching their heads because again, not many people are aware that petrified wood is even in this region. So that is so, so cool. Very interesting to find out. And again, just another reason that when you see something at a random place like a welcome center, you should pay attention and come out and check it out because you never know what it's actually going to be. And we're only on stop four. There's a bunch of these. We finally made it to stop six and stop six right here, as you can see, is huge in comparison to Tyson. He's only like six pounds. This thing, on the other hand, 14,000 pounds. It's estimated that it is 14, almost 15,000 pounds. And you can see on this one, it looks a little bit different. They say that on this one, because of the way that the texture goes down the surface, that you can more directly tell that this one was washed downstream and to its location and was probably withered away by the water as it went. And it's kind of interesting to see because I'm looking at it from this angle and it kind of looks like an alligator, but it's not. It's not an alligator. They also have named it the frog because from a different angle, it kind of looks like a frog because you can see eyes, nose, and a mouth. But this is a mammoth piece of petrified wood right here. Stop seven brings us to another couple pieces that you can see kind of sticking out. And this one's interesting because it brings to your attention that each of these pieces is in its natural spot. So they have not been moved. They just left them intact. So this one clearly has a little bit more going on in way of this mound of dirt, which is somewhat covering it up still. So in time, this will be more and more revealed, which is very exciting. This is actually really nice. They have handicap accessibility throughout this trail. So this is nice for everyone who wants to come out. And you can see quite a bit 
of this park this way. This is so nice that it has those kind of accommodations. But right next to that, we see this one, which is one of the most notable pieces of this establishment. This is called Caveman's Bench. Now, overall, Caveman's Bench is from a larger section, which is still embedded up here. And they said that this section alone is about 40 feet in length. Now, this does allow you to get a little hands-on. They say you can sit on this, you can touch it, you can feel what it's like, and you can see each of the striations and layers in Caveman's Bench, which gives you a better idea as to what this actually looks like when it's not in its space, that again, it's natural space where it ended up. But this is very, very cool. I am really enjoying this. And I've been to a lot of other places that have petrified wood. For example, in Colorado or in Arizona or even in parts of New Mexico. But it looks a bit different here because it's covered with the lichen and you have this forest overhead that just really makes it something a bit different. I am thoroughly enjoying this though. Definitely worth the small expenditure to get here. But let me show you a little bit more and then we'll catch up a little bit down the line. I'm gonna leave some of these numbers for you, but I'll fill in some of the blanks once we get a little further down. Now beyond this point, it is not handicap accessible. So we're gonna be off-roading it just a little bit here. We have now made it to stop 11 and along the way we learned a couple of things. First and foremost, the petrified wood is used as a habitat for small woodland creatures. So you might see tiny little bunnies or raccoons or other small things that can fit into the little crevices and cracks calling it home. And I think that that's just a bigger picture of the forest as a whole, but these form more like durable shelters because they're almost like a stone finish. We also learned that even though these logs look like like they have bark on them that is no longer bark that's actually formed by the wind and also the movement of the water through these logs what happens is they have tiny little cracks in them and the water gets inside and whenever it freezes it then chips off little tiny pieces of the outer layer and it makes it more closely resemble bark but at one point in time these were probably just really smoothed down by the movement of the water through them. And now that they're in a resting place that doesn't have continuous water to buffer them off, it looks more like bark now, which is fascinating. At stop 13, we learned one of the more fascinating pieces about this entire property. So believe it or not, uh, approximately 140 years ago, this area that I'm about to show you was actually 60 feet taller. And at one point in time, they had to stop farming on it altogether because they had wasted the ground away basically. So whenever they opened this as a trail even, it was considerably higher. And in that time, birds have brought in seeds and vines have begun to take over. And what was considered a bad land where nothing would grow is now this. Isn't that crazy? The restoration that nature does for itself is so cool. And places like this protect and preserve the history of places and people and the things that we find like the petrified wood. But it also tells us a little bit more about how the world changes over time. And so it's pretty fascinating to see that. Definitely something worth a stop. And again, learned all of that on my little trail guide. Here in front of us, we have one of the larger trees here in the park. And this one was estimated to have at one point in time been about 100 feet tall. It is a gigantic tree that has several sections that you can see kind of laying over to the side. But the interior of it has a cavernous piece that you can actually see deep into it kind of from an angle over here, which is really neat. So I can only imagine that some kind of little critter probably burrows in there whenever it's raining to stay dry. But all of these pieces that are attached to this section, to this little number, were all chunks of this. And they said that it probably broke apart as the water would continue to push on it and try to embed it into different places when there was 
when the ancient river existed. So this is really fascinating. But again, we're only on stop 14 and there's so much more. So let's go catch up with Riley and Tyson. As we're going along, we see this sign also, and as you look up to the canopy, you can see what this is talking about. Bent trees are the result of Arctic ice storm of 1989. So as we're looking along, if we see some gnarly looking trees, that's why. I mean, obviously these, these are not the gnarly trees. These are the petrified trees, but you know what I'm talking about. Now, it is believed that the redder sand that is on this particular slot is actually from 36 to 38 million years ago. Believe that or not. It has been dated back to that far back based on the content of the soil itself. And they can trace that things have been found here that would only be found in the water otherwise. Of course, our planet has changed a lot throughout its entire life. So it's not uncommon to find areas that are now pretty dry areas that don't have seas or rivers or oceans having things that might not make sense as to why they're there now, but at one point in time, they did. And so we're seeing these cliffs as a result of that. They said that also the topsoil that's on there actually at one point in time would create these gnarly dust storms that would coat the red rock and the red sands. And in doing so, it basically coated and locked in these petrified logs into their home but that's also the thing that has moved the most over time. And so that's the thing that constantly is eroding today. And just like that, we came off of the more rugged trail across a bridge and back to our flat handicap accessible area. As we come up the hill, we find this, which is stop 24. And according to this, it says that the hills of the Mississippi Petrified Forest are among the highest in this immediate area. And at one point in time, they were about 360 feet above sea level. As a result of their height, they were actually used during the Civil War as like little hideouts. They were also used as areas where they could get behind the mounds so that they could have a good visual of what was ahead, but also be protected. It's pretty fascinating to see how the natural landscape can be so fascinating, but also how it can allow us to see how this was used by various people throughout the years, not just about the petrified wood, but everything out here it's pretty pretty cool people have lived in this area people have farmed in this area people have been involved in conflict in this area and now we are here recreating in this area so it's a full circle moment for this particular location meanwhile riley are you enjoying this place yeah it's beautiful the weather's perfect i'm hanging out with good company I may have broken my back. And Tyson's with us. Hi, buddy. Hi, I see you down there by your mom's feet hiding out. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? So altogether, there are 26 stops along the way. We just passed 25, and the 26th one tells us that when we get to the nature trail ending, that we will enter the Earth Science Museum, and that features the displays of all the petrified wood fossils and minerals. So that is pretty cool. Now again, guys, this is just scratching the surface of all the information that is provided in the trail map, but I think you can see from this that it's a really nice place to just get out here and check something different out. We get to get some brain wrinkles while exploring the great outdoors. This walk by no means is difficult. It's pretty easy. Just bring some nice shoes with you and you'll be fine. 
this was super fun, but we have this one last place to go and look, and I think I'm just gonna show you a few scenes from inside so you can kind of get an idea, but I'm gonna leave this for you all so it can be a little mission of discovery. This has been fascinating, and I'm so happy that we stopped off at the Visitor Center in Vicksburg and found out about this. It pays to make those stops. You find all sorts of really neat things that you might not know exist, and it gives you a way to do something that it doesn't have to break the bank. It can be affordable to everyone. Families have been out here enjoying this all day and we've just kind of been interacting with them as they pass. And you can see that this is fun for all ages. But we're gonna go inside and then we'll wrap up this video after we get out of here. Thanks guys for coming along with me today on the adventure. I've really enjoyed sharing this. I picked up my patch on my way out and I'm so excited to add this to all of my exciting adventures on my adventure wall or in my van, I haven't decided. But if you've enjoyed today's video, make sure that you check out places like this. Remember, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. So why not fill them with beautiful locations and a lot of brain wrinkles. Till next time guys, bye.